Hey guys, Nathan Masters here, also known as Galaxy 12 Imports. Uh, I'm looking at Rebrickable today. Now we have done a video about this website and kind of how to get started here, but today I'm going to be looking at a really specific feature to help you keep track of loose parts. So go ahead and check that out right up here if you are not very familiar with Rebrickable, but if you kind of know your way around the site already and want to look at using some part lists and doing a little bit more work to get uh, lists of pieces into your collection, stick around, we're gonna figure out how to do that. So make sure you're logged into Rebrickable and then come up here to this drop down tab for my Lego and go to my parts lists. And this will take you to um, the list of parts that you've already created. As you can see, it's got uh, all of my parts list and then it's gonna give me this little visual summary here. I'm gonna go to this one that I called part lot temp list and it's empty right now. And uh, I created this list so that I have a place to load in a list of parts and kind of edit those however I want and maybe get a screenshot of that list. Uh, I can even export that as we'll see. And then when I'm done with doing all of that, I can actually move all of these pieces into any of my other lists. And usually I'm going to be moving it into this pick a brick master list where I'm keeping track of everything that I've picked up at Lego stores. So uh, yeah, go ahead and log into your Rebrickable and create some kind of empty list for this purpose. Uh, I would recommend having something um, with temp or temporary in the name so that you know this is kind of where you want to upload things to. And then if you keep track of your Lego orders, you should be able to go and look at um, past order details. And specifically, we want to look at this number. This one is an actual set, the B-Wing, and then this one here is the internal number for Lego pick a brick order. And then after that, it actually lists each individual piece that I ordered. and. I took screenshots of this order so that I have a record of those piece numbers. So whenever you, you place this order in the past, you should be able to go and find it uh, from your LEGO account. So if you want to do this method, you'll have to go ahead and export these numbers somehow. There might actually be an easier way to do this, but this list is small enough that I decided uh, to just copy everything by hand into a text document and you do need to follow the specific format so at the first the first line of the text document we'll just open it up it needs to say element comma quantity and then uh, all subsequent lines need to have two entries they need to have the element ID and the quantity of pieces that you ordered so for example this text document has the 235701 with one quantity and that just reflects this entry and yeah I just went down for each item uh, on these screenshots and put in an entry in this tech document text document and then I saved it uh, with something that I could find ID list May 4th 2015 right okay pretty good now we go back to our rebrickable site and we use import and delete parts. So this will bring up a pop-up box here. You can go and choose a file. If you have a couple different screens open, I think you can also just drag it over. Yeah, I need to do it from my from my window. So I can do this as well. I can just click on the text file, and drag it over, and put that right in place here. And now I have this file in the pop-up editor. So I'll come down here and append parts, and it'll think for a minute, processing flat file, converting from scheme uh, RB, which just has to do with using that two item listing, found 162 parts. So it looks like we had a successful import. Let's see what we got. Yeah, we imported these 32 unique parts, and it also imported the quantity. So, you know, two red tiles. This was a while ago, I don't remember specifically why I ordered all of these from Pick a Brick Online, but uh, yeah, that works pretty good. From here, we can actually change what we're seeing. We can sort it by category. 
um, maybe get a little bit better on the visual side, sorting by color, uh, even sorting by hue. So all of our grayscale are on the last side. It's sorted by price. I think we actually have to reload the page and then it will give you some more data. So now we've updated this up here. Our, our price data is filled in now, so we can sort by price. And uh, you can, when you, when you click on it again, it will just toggle it. So it starts with the most expensive, and then if you just click price again, it will put it on the least expensive. Same thing with all the other categories. Okay, so now we have uh, this individual list of these parts. Uh, I think it'd be really nice for my personal records to be able to have just a screenshot of this list of parts. So I could do that with uh, the clipping tool or something similar like that. But you don't really have to do that because you can actually export this image into a grid and then you can just print this from your screen. Or if you want to get really fancy, you can export it as a table. And uh, now you can use your screen printer or control print or whatever and put that right into a PDF. So that works pretty good as well. And then if you're in a PDF, you should be able down the road if you want to copy um, all of the row and column data into a CSV. Uh, you can actually export it to a CSV from here as well. A specific one for rebrickable. But for small lots like this, um, where it's not the end of the world if I have to manually enter data, then it's not too much of an inconvenience to just have it as a PDF or even as a, just a flat PNG file that I can get a, a visual for. I mean, there's only 32 unique entries here. So at the end of the day, that's all I'm really after. Um, once you're done with all of that, we want to go to bulk edit, select all, and then move it you can move it to any other list that you want. Um, usually I would go ahead and move it to the pick a brick master list, but I already have this inventory in the list, so I don't actually need to move it right now. And I'll just cancel that. Um, I'll go ahead and empty all of this out. The rebrickable tools for editing parts lists and creating these parts lists are really powerful. And you can do this even with a free account. There is a bit of a limitation I think you can have, um, there's only a maximum number of individual parts list you can have, and then for each parts list, there's a maximum number of unique elements you can have. So um, back in the original video about using Rebrickable, uh, I went over those limitations a little bit, so go back and check that out. I don't remember the numbers exactly, um, but it's not super prohibitive in terms of using these until you get up to quite a large collection. So at this point, I'm still able to import a lot of parts and, and manipulate all these lists pretty easily. And uh, that that's actually really useful for keeping track of these. Because if you, if you notice, this was back in 2015. I wasn't exactly tracking my collection very thoroughly back then. So to be able to go and do this with something that's five years old and get some accurate information uh, is pretty remarkable and Rebrickable really makes it easy to do that. So hopefully this was helpful for you guys and uh, like I mentioned we got other videos about using this site and we also have looked at using other LEGO uh, fan sites around the web like Brickset um, that do similar things but kind of built for different purposes. So. Go check those out if you're interested, and thanks for watching Brick System Brothers.